Hello, it's Melody. Welcome to A Saner Spin, episode 30. Uh, today, I want to talk about advocating for yourself and the importance of advocating for yourself. My cat is also saying hello here. She has decided to sit on my lap, even though I pushed her off several times, but she thinks this is where she belongs right now. So this is an example of advocating for yourself, even though someone else isn't really agreeing with you. Eventually, they become agreeable and they back down because you're so damn persistent. So that said, uh, part of advocating for yourself means planning ahead. That means knowing that you are, are not always going to be in, in your best state of mind. If you're dealing with a mental health issue, uh, that means having a crisis plan, having a psychiatric advance directive. Hopefully your state recognizes them. Every state should recognize them, and they are beginning to do that to a growing extent. A uh, healthcare power of attorney, and even if it's not a legal document, just a crisis plan so that your loved ones know what kinds of treatment you are willing to tolerate uh, if you are not in a state of mind where you can tell them that in the moment. So planning ahead is huge, but also just being cautious when you're not in that uh, acute state, which hopefully you never get to, and recognizing that doctors are humans. I know for a fact, because I was raised by, raised by two doctors, they are human. Uh, they can be extraordinary and wonderful, and they, there can be very bad doctors. Uh, you can't just trust somebody because they have uh, a certain degree, and even from a certain school. You can't trust them for that reason alone. They have to earn your trust. Like someone in any other profession, uh, they have to do a good job. And it's very hard in psychiatry to do a good job because it's a field that is basically, in clinical psychiatry, it's basically a field of trial and error. Um, increasingly, we're learning about some people have certain genes that mean this drug will be more effective for them or, or something like that. But even when that is the case, it takes a long time for that research to actually make it into clinical practice. Uh, so we are waiting for that to actually happen. And, and we need good data before we start just putting stuff into clinical practice as well, right? Uh, and I think also part of that, knowing your doctor is human, is knowing that they may potentially have some conflicts of interest, especially with big pharma. And I think it's worth, uh, ProPublica has this fantastic site called um, Dollars for Docs, I think it's called. I'll, I'll put a link to it down here. Uh, and it's, it'll basically tell you which doctors have gotten uh, how much money from some pharmaceutical companies. I think it lists, lists doctors who get more than a certain amount of money from pharmaceutical companies and which ones. So if your doctor is recommending the newest and bestest drug for you, uh, and it's only been on the market for a year, no matter how great that drug is, it has not been tested for any extended period of time. Uh, if, if it's only been on the market for a year, right? So you need to be more cautious about that kind of stuff. Doesn't mean that drug might not be fantastic and work for you. Uh, but if your doctor is taking tons of money from the pharmaceutical company that makes that drug, maybe it should raise a couple eyebrows. I don't know. Maybe you should think about it. Uh, it certainly would make me think twice. So all that to say, advocate for yourself. Do not accept bad medicine. Uh, and part of that means planning ahead. And part of that means just standing up and making people uncomfortable if you have to at times. So that's it for now. Until next time, take care. See you soon.